regular meeting number 27 will now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Member Stenziano, will you please lead us in the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In lieu of prayer this evening, we'd just like to stand in a moment of silence. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Can I get a motion? Um, pardon me. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Is there a second? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda. They'll be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not this time. How about resolutions from members of council? Council Member Elizabeth Brown, Council Member Mitch Brown. Thank you, Council President. Uh, at this time, tonight I have one resolution. If I may, I would like to ask Fire Chief Chief O'Connor and Dr. Kesick and guests to please approach the podium. Resolution 011X2017 to declare the week of May 21st through the 27th, 2017 to be Emergency Medical Services Week in Columbus, Ohio. Whereas emergency medical service providers provide, perform a vital public service with over 1,500 members of the Columbus Division of Fire, providing life saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas the members of the Columbus Division of Fire are highly trained paramedics that have the most current training and state of the art equipment so that they can manage any emergency medical situation they may encounter. And whereas the emergency medical service system consists of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, and administrators. And whereas the Columbus Division of Fire and other emergency personnel will be hosting several events this week to promote the importance of CPR training. And whereas it is important to recognize the value of accomplishments, sacrifices, and selfless contributions of emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Service Week now and therefore be it resolved by this council of the City of Columbus that this council does hereby declare the week of May 21st through the 27th, 2017 to be the Emergency Medical Services Week and expresses its gratitude to all members of the Columbus Division of Fire for their outstanding contributions to the safety and well-being of the citizens of Columbus. I move for adoption. Brown, Brown, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Chief Carl Connor and Dr. Kessick, the floor is yours. Thank you. On behalf of the 1,523 members of the Columbus Division of Fire, we want to say thank you for recognizing us. One of the things that as a Division of Fire, we always want to let the public know is that we're here for them. Um, this recognition may be coming to us, but it's because we can give back. Council has funded us with the ability. This year, we have five more medics in service full time than we did last year because of that increase in demand. We want to say thank you for that. But I just kind of wanted to give you a brief perspective on what EMS in Columbus has evolved to in today. Um, this year, we're making, on average, 300 plus EMS runs a day, um, every given day. About 25% of that time, these members of the Columbus Division of Fire are doing that on a 24 hour basis. They're doing that a quarter of the time after what most people would say that somebody else has gone to sleep. So it doesn't matter whether it's day or night, what the weather is, we're willing to go out. 
Um, we're a diverse organization that responds to a diverse community, and that, what's great about that is it's never a consideration. Every community we go into, we want to thank those communities because we are welcome in that community because we want to have that outreach. Um, some of the things as we go forward this week, and I'm going to have Dr. Kessick come up here and introduce in just a second some of the things, was the fact that that civilian CPR in the streets is something we need to increase here in Columbus, that we're doing everything we can. Right now, we're seeing about three cardiac arrests a day, but only about one in three of those cardiac arrests are having somebody doing CPR before we can arrive there on the scene. We need to increase that number. That's one of the, th that's the things we're going to be doing this week in regard to events, is increasing that number of people that are doing CPR. Right now, one of the other things we're dealing with and everybody across the country is, is that opiate crisis. About nine times a day, we're having to introduce Narcan to somebody to help bring them back because of that opiate crisis that's going on. That demand that it's putting on the EMS service and the community as a whole is something that the Division of Fire has stepped up to in cooperation. We want to thank all of our partners across the city, both Council, Adam H. has stepped up. We have a new program working with the REACT team that's responding out there right now. That team has had some very good successes and it's a very short infancy that it's been out there. But we couldn't have done it without the support of everyone here on Council and as part of the Columbus Division of Fire, we want to say thank you to that. Um, what I'd like to do right now is just let you know these are some of the first responders that respond on any given day. Um, they came out just to represent the Division of Fire, but right now I'd like to introduce Dr. Kessick, and he's going to kind of introduce some of the things we'll be doing this week. Thank you, Chief O'Connor, and President Klein, Council Member Mitchell Brown, members of Council, Assistant uh, Public Safety Director Collins, and assorted city uh, officials. Just thank you so much for this acknowledgement of EMS Week. I want you to know that I have uh, correspondence with my other medical directors in other cities, and our city does the very uh, most activities during EMS week. When I told our medical, uh, the medical directors of the other cities how much we do to recognize EMS in our city during EMS week, they were astounded. Uh, you know, they saw that we really valued EMS, and that's a reflection of you as our city leaders, our fire administration, our public safety department, that you know how valuable EMS is. And with these heroes that are standing up here today, I mean, these are the people that we really want to acknowledge, the fact that they dedicate their lives to preserving public safety and saving lives each and every day. So yesterday, Sunday, we did an event with COSI. We had an EMS and safety day. We had members of our Division of Fire down there teaching anytime CPR. We showed how we take people out of cars that are all crushed and how we extricate them. We had all the vehicles down there to show everybody all the different bells and whistles we have on our EMS response vehicles. And tomorrow, we're going to do some new American CPR training. We're going to take some of the Nepalese and Bhutanese community, the Ethiopian community, We're going to go out, teach them how to do CPR, give them anytime CPR kits that they can take to their communities. On Wednesday, we're going to go to a middle school here in Columbus Public Schools, and we're going to teach 100 eighth graders anytime CPR, and they get to take an anytime CPR home to teach their family members and to teach their neighbors. And we actually have a contest where we reward the individual who teaches the most people. Thursday, our signature event during EMS week, and Council Member Brown, Council, uh, President Klein, and some of you, have, uh, Council Member Cinziano, have come to this event. It's our cardiac arrest survivor celebration. And what we do, it's our 10th annual celebration. We celebrate life because we're celebrating people who were dead and were brought back to life by individuals here within the Columbus Division of Fire. And we have some very dramatic and, uh, and great stories to tell during that event. And of course, I think all of you city council got invitations to come, love to have you all come. And then Friday, we're gonna be down in front of Nationwide from 11 to one, and we're just gonna be asking passerbys, would you like to learn anytime CPR? We'll have mannequins down there praying that there's no rain and it's sunny, and we're gonna hope that we can have people just learn CPR and learn how easy it is to do and not to be afraid of it. So as a kind of reflection of what we do out there in the field in terms of cardiac arrest, during our EMS resolution uh, Monday that we have, we always like to ask someone who can come and provide us with a personification of how important EMS is. And we're very fortunate tonight to have Mrs. Carolyn Miller, who is going to be able to come, and I think she wants to say a few words about her experience back in 2005. So, Ms. Miller? Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you to my heroes. <laughs> I was in the doctor's office, at Dr. Cooney's office, and my heart stopped. He called my heroes. They came giving CPR and whatever they did, I don't know. <laughs> and to this day, I have three girls and I saw my grandchildren. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have seen them. And what a tremendous, they come in town every year. We go see them because they need more than anything can give them. They are the heroes. So, I am so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Any comments from my colleagues? President Potem May President I chair? Klein. Yes, sir. Th thank you, Chair Brown. Uh, just quick to the uh, men and women of the Division of Fire. Uh, thank you for being the heroes uh, that you are. And we're grateful for your service and your professionalism uh, and your dedication to the city of Columbus. Uh, we love our Division of Fire and we're grateful for everything that you do. So thank you. And thank you, Dr. Kessick, for your leadership, Chief, uh, as well as Mr. Capretta, Local 67, and everything that you do as well. Thank you. President Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, t I, too, want to say thank you so very much for what you're doing each and every day. Certainly, I've had the opportunity to ride in, um, <clears throat> in some of the vehicles and be able to go where you're going to help residents in our community and just the amazing job that you do when you're out making sure that you're saving lives. I also just want to say also a sp special thank you for the work that you're doing now in terms of the epidemic that we have in our community that we certainly didn't realize we are going to be in this place. And so for the work that's been done around um, the opioid, opioid epidemic, I thank you because, again, that wasn't something that I, I know that we thought we were going to be faced with, nor did any, any other city around the country. But just appreciate what you're doing, saving lives there. And just also know that um, we know that there's more that needs to be done. And as this body, we're here to also to help you. You've saved that life, but we also know that it needs to be, we need to do a lot more within this community to, to save those lives. So thank you um, and thank your families for allowing you to do the work that you do in service to the residents of our city. Thank you so very much. You. Firefighter Capretta, do you have any comments? President Klein, Council, um, my guest, Carolyn, um, I was one that got to work on her. Excuse me. She's, uh, she's made it an effort every year to come find me wherever I'm working and tell me how special I am. I thank you guys for giving us the ability to do what we do. I appreciate the chief and Dr. Kessick, but she's made it a big change in my life to um, Sometimes we get complacent when we do our work. It's just another person, it's another run, EMS run. I met a good friend in 2005. She didn't know it. I got to know her family. I was just invited to her 70th birthday party <laughs> <laughs> with her twin sister. <laughs> and she brings a joy to my life every year. I just wanna, I know I got emotional about it, but She's made it very emotional with me. So um, I thank you. And again, I stand here humble in front of you guys. Thank you. For all of you, for again, you've heard from the leadership and from all the other members of council, the acknowledgement of what you do every day, 365 days out of the year, 24 hours a day. It is undeniably and without question appreciated. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you.
think Mr. Capretta could be in trouble for spilling the, uh, <laughs> the beans with the age, Mr. Capretta. <laughs> That's all I have, Council President. I have an announcement tomorrow, Tuesday at 5 o'clock. I will have a hearing on my legislation that will be on the council agenda for June the 5th. So thank you. 5 o'clock in council chambers. Thank you, President Pro Tem. How about comments from our elected officials, Mr. Dorian, Treasurer's Office, City Attorney's Office? I don't see any representatives here from the judiciary. Seeing none. Are there any requests by members of council for the removal of an ordinance or resolution from the consent action portion of the agenda? May we have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you, Clerk Bevins. Will you now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's reading or tonight's agenda for first reading? Finance Committee, Ordinance 966-2017, Administration Committee, Ordinances 1287 and 1288-2017, Public Service and Transportation Committee, Resolution 139X-2017, Ordinance 1153-2017, Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 530, 1029, 1080, 1155, 1181, and 1192-2017, Rules and Reference Committee, Ordinance 1304-2017. We do have one first reading speaker. Is Mr. Stephen Edelstein here? Edelstein? Looks like you are speaking in favor of 1304-2017, which is on first reading. If you just could state your name, because perhaps I didn't say it correctly, any organizations you represent, your address, and you'll have three minutes. Sure. Uh, my name is Steve Edelstein, Stephen Edelstein. I'm a representative of the One ID Columbus Coalition, 404 South 3rd Street, Columbus, and I'm also a resident of Columbus. Council President Klein and members of council, we've met with each of you individually, and you know that our scope is much broader than immigrants. It includes victims of domestic abuse, the homeless, the elderly, but because this ordinance deals specifically with immigrants, we have asked for the opportunity to address you this evening. The One ID Columbus Coalition commends and supports the efforts of City Council to make Columbus more welcoming to immigrants by putting into law the mayor's executive order on immigration. We are here tonight at this first reading to encourage council to take the additional step necessary to greatly increase the potential for real improvement in the day-to-day -day lives of the tens of thousands of Columbus residents who continue to live in the shadows because of their immigration status. On the surface, the proposed ordinance seems to guarantee that immigration status will not be a factor in the outcome of an encounter between a resident and a law enforcement officer. But unfortunately, in its present form, immigration status is very likely to continue to come into play in the following manner. Under current city policy, many minor infractions that would ordinarily result in a simple citation escalate to arrestable offenses if the person committing the infraction cannot produce acceptable identification. Since they are unable to obtain an ID that city accepts, undocumented immigrants accused of these minor infractions become subject to arrest. And once an arrest occurs, exception clauses in the proposed ordinance effectively nullify the very protections that the ordinance purports to provide. Simply put, 
In order for the ordinance to fully accomplish its stated goals, every Columbus resident must be able to obtain an ID that is officially recognized. Across the nation, cities that are serious about welcoming immigrants into an active engagement of a community's civic and commercial life have addressed this problem by issuing a municipal ID, a locally issued secure photo identification card. While cooperative work between the Columbus City Council and the One ID Columbus Coalition is well underway, we look forward to continuing the effort to make Columbus truly welcoming. Again, we support the Council's efforts in developing this ordinance, and we thank you for the opportunity of speaking tonight. Thank you, Mr. Edelstein. Any questions or comments for Mr. Mr. Edelstein? Uh, we appreciate your comments. Uh, thank you for coming down. Uh, and one thing that was announced at our uh, community conversation that we had last or two weeks ago uh, was that uh, w City Council uh, will be leading, and I will be leading, uh, a criminal code review uh, from a top to bottom review of our criminal code in the next couple months. Uh, so we welcome you to be part of that conversation when you mentioned arrestable offenses and identification. So certainly, when, as we review uh, our city code for its modernity and it's, it's, whether it's up to date, whether it's uh, preempted by state law, we welcome you to, ch to chime in and, uh, and your group to chime in on uh, its relevancy to the issues that you care about. Okay, okay. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. The following ordinances appear in our agenda as consent actions. Will the clerk now read the ordinance numbers of each of the record? Resolutions of Expression 153X, 151X, 154X-2017 Finance Committee. Ordinances 948, 967, 1160, 1234, 1235, 1236, and 1247 2017. Health and Human Services Committee. Ordinances 1107, 1109, 1162, and 1221 2017. Economic Development Committee. Ordinances 1301 and 1302 2017. Public Safety Committee. Ordinance 1197 2017. Public Service and Transportation Committee, Resolution 132X-2017, Ordinances 1168, 1230, and 1280-2017. Small and Minority Business Development Committee, Ordinances 1215 and 1296-2017. Recreation and Parks Committee, Ordinances 1251 and 1259-2017. Housing Committee, Ordinances 1032, 1231, 1283, 1297, and 1298-2017. Technology Committee, Ordinances 1098 and 1214-2017. Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 1125 and 1178-2017. Judiciary and Court Administration Committee, Ordinance 745-2017. Appointments from the Mayor's Office, numbered A0040, 89, 91, 93, 94, and 95-2017. Thank you, Clerk. Mm -hmm. We do have one consent speaker, Mr. Nathaniel G. Wilkins. Welcome back to council, Mr. Wilkins. You have three minutes. 1612 Arlington Avenue, Mr. Nathaniel George Wilkins, the chairman of the vacant property. I would like to uh, speak about 1500 Lamarto Avenue for quite some time. Um, I know there's been multiple people have fought, uh, fought over this particular piece of land. And um, I'm not going to say I'm for it or against it. Um, there's several questions here. I know there's several people in the area wanted this house to do other things in the neighborhood. And as I find out that this particular uh, Probably what's going to be on your agenda tonight. I will request one thing, and only one thing, because this is a different situation of this property. It has a double white lot, a three car garage. Um, I'm looking for one person to have this home. It's not an investor, but it's a private individual that's going to live in this property for 25 years. And because of this, you know, I was engaging a couple people with this property due to land bank and to a shelf auction. 
And I had told them multiple times, it will go for a tax foreclosure and go get it at the time. And they just wasted full around whatever the case may be. But I'm for this only for one reason and only why. For one property, not for an investor, but somebody to live in this property and occupy it and clean it up. And thank you for your time. I'm for this again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. Director Shoney, if you could work with Mr. Wilkins on his uh, concept and assistance of that particular project. Any questions or comments to be made about the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, can I have a motion for approval of these items designated as consent? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Consent carries. We'll now proceed with the second reading of 30-day table and emergency legislation. The first committee is Health and Human Services, is chaired by the President Pro Tem. Chair Tyson, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. And the ordinance, the only ordinance I have in Health and Human Services is ordinance number 1279-2017 to authorize the Columbus Public Health to enter into a grant agreement with Equitas Health in support of the King Lincoln Medical Center and the Greater Columbus Empowerment Center to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the Special Income Tax Fund and to declare an emergency. This is for $150,000. Equitas Health has recently expanded their medical and dental services, dental clinic services to the King Lincoln neighborhood with the opening of a new facility at 750 East Long Street. This facility will provide critical, critical primary care services to residents of the neighborhood and will contribute greatly to the overall community health. It's really important that this facility is in the King Lincoln neighborhood, 43203. Um, in this neighborhood, there, um, to every 5,000 people, there's only one physician. And, um, and one of the reasons that we're looking at um, some of the disparities in terms of health, in, in terms of health disparities, that's the number one issue is access to care. And so certainly having this facility in that neighbor will help to provide additional access to care for that community. Also, this community has, um, the infant mortality rate is high, about two times the amount of African-American babies are dying as opposed to Caucasian babies. And so it is important that, um, that this particular facility is in that neighborhood. Also, $50,000 will be going to the empowerment program of Equitas, and that particular program is important to our community because um, for thinking again about um, disparities in health care that we're certainly seeing between the ages of um, like 13 to 25, 29 years of age, we see a higher level of HIV and AIDS and STDs within the African American community. And so by having this particular program in, um, within Equitas will be very helpful because they're certainly reaching out to um, African American men to ensure that they're not contracting, hopefully not contracting this, Ill this disease, um, but if they have either any of these illnesses that they will be able to get the services that they need. So it's, you know, it's very important to be able to provide um, this, these health care services to that community. There are no questions or comments. I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, <coughs> Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. I would now like to move to workforce development. Thank you. I have ordinance number 1158-2017. This is to authorize the director of the Department of Development to enter into a not-for-profit service contract with the Workforce Development Board of Central Ohio to assist the unemployed, underemployed, and discouraged workers living in the Milo, Gro in Milo Grogan with accessing employment opportunities to appropriate $50,000 in fund 2237, the Neighborhood Economic Development Fund, to authorize expenditure of $50,000 from the fund 2237, the Neighborhood Economic Development Fund, and to declare an emergency. This is really a, an exciting piece of legislation. And um, this legislation is a pilot project that will work with um, 
a nonprofit organization or two will work with the community of Milo Groga to facilitate job readiness and, re and a retention program for the unemployed or underemployed. And so in recent years, in recent years, revitalizing this neighborhood has been really a major focus for the city of Columbus. And the neighborhood has begun to experience something of a resurgence. Several businesses have decided to locate in the neighborhood, including Rogue Fitness. I think we all can remember the legislation that we passed for Rogue Fitness. So Rogue Fitness, which is um, right on the corner of uh, Fifth Avenue in Cleveland, and um, which is constructing, which has constructed already, if you've driven over that way, a $600,000 600, square foot um, at corporate headquarters, manufacturing and distribution center, and several other businesses are also expanding within the neighborhood. Um, the city has uh, provided approximately uh, $7.7 .7 million in road work improvement, new sidewalks, street resurfacing, and the, again, the redesign of Fifth and Cleveland, that whole, that whole intersection. Rogue Fitness, Rumpke, and Coda are also reinvesting in the neighborhood by creating employment opportunities for local residents. So, so the Workforce Development Board of Central Ohio will select a nonprofit social service agency, or they could do a group of them, for the purposes of, again, one, ensuring that um, job skills for individuals within the Milo Grogan community, so help, and then helping them to find full-time employment. They will also um, work with a pool of qualified potential job applicants from within the neighborhood and also provide, which is important, retention services. Because if you're working with individuals who have been underemployed or unemployed, you really have to have a holistic approach to providing them with the services that they need to be able to get, to get the gainful um, uh, employment skills. And so they will, we have a retention through the first year of employment. So to work with the individual, if they're having any issues or concerns, if they're having any family issues or concerns, just to provide those supportive services so that they will have success. And then um, lastly, uh, no, lastly, they will also make sure that if this is successful, then as I said, this is a pilot, then we will be able to you know, use this same model in other communities and be able to scale up in those areas. So this is an exciting piece of legislation and um, Director Shoney, do you want to add any additional comments? I want to also say thank you for your work on this. Um, thank you, President Pro Tem, uh, President Klein, members of council. Uh, you did a great job of summarizing um, and it, this is something we're really excited about. I would be remiss if I didn't give credit to uh, the team in our Economic Development Division. This really was, uh, and uh, to our friends at Franklin County, this really was a situation where we had um, a lot of people get around an idea and really try and move it forward. So um, Quentin Harris, Mark Lundeen, Ashley Sen, Anthony Slappy, uh, Jim Shimmer at the county, and then Lisa Pat McDaniel, um, when she came in and she heard about this program, she jumped on it right away. And I think that's the kind of um, coming together of different agencies that allows us to do something like this. So we're really excited about it and hopefully it'll work and we'll be taking it to other places. Thank you. Also, this piece of legislation is also co-sponsored by Councilmember Michael Cinziano. Do you want to make a few comments? Uh, just very briefly, appreciate uh, the development's leadership on this and then Generally, when you go to the Area Commission, you hear uh, from this community talking about employment opportunities, and Rogue is a big piece, uh, but, but that may not be for all of the uh, residents, and so very excited that the pilot's going to start there, and as the director mentioned, expand out to many of our other neighborhoods, so really look forward to the lessons learned and, and then how to improve this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And so I move, oh, Councilmember Elizabeth Brown. Um, I was just going to say on my visits to the Milo Grogan Area Commission, the members were um, ecstatic about the relationship with the economic development team and sort of building this collaboratively. So I, I want to do an extra hats off to your team. Um, it was clearly appreciated by, by residents and I, I appreciate and really love that you built this um, in conjunction with people in the neighborhoods. It wasn't a bright idea that came for your team from your team and was developed in the you know in the vacuum of your team as smart as they are they really reached out um, so thank you yeah I mean the, sorry thank you councilmember Brown um, this is really one of those ones where it, it's working the way it's supposed to the team we had a big project the team didn't just plunk the project down and leave um, 
they got in and worked with uh, the, the community. Robert Barksdale in particular, I would be remiss if I didn't um, acknowledge Mr. Barksdale for his role in this and leading the commission through this process. It's been um, really good. As with most things this good, I didn't have much to do with it, but I had a great team that did, so. I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. And I just was remiss. I need to just make a comment on the legislation that I passed in Health and Human Services because that piece of legislation was also sponsored, co-sponsored by Councilman Shannon Hardin. And I know that he certainly is someone that wants to make sure that there's health care within all communities. But I know that he is concerned, just as I am, about um, certainly the um, the illness of HIV AIDS and STDs within um, the African American community and I certainly don't want to want to make sure that I'm giving him um, sharing with the listening and viewing audience his his um, sponsorship of that piece of legislation and with that um, that's all I have in my committees thank you thank you president pro Tim Tyson the next committee is economic development is chaired by Councilmember Elizabeth Brown chair Brown the floor is yours Thank you, President Klein. Tonight in economic development, we have one piece of legislation, Ordinance 1219-2017, to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a contract with the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission, MORPSI, for the purpose of conducting an area study in the Rickenbacker region, and to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of $25,000 from the Special Income Tax Fund, and to declare an emergency. The Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission is conducting an area study in this region which will project growth potential over the next 10 to 20 years. This study will allow Columbus to plan development in the area in a smarter, more strategic way. The Morpsey study's total funding pool is $279,000, consisting of, a, of public and private dollars, of which, as this legislation states, Columbus is contributing $25,000. The study will focus on existing infrastructure, housing, workforce access and competitiveness, and opportunities for improvements and continued collaboration between regional city partners like Columbus 2020, Morpsey, and other municipalities. The Rickenbacker Airport represents a major asset for Columbus and the Central Ohio region. This study will help us understand how we can strategically maximize the benefits it provides as a driver of economic development and growth in good paying jobs. Any questions for my colleagues? I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. That's all I have in my committees. Thank you. The next committee is public safety. It's chaired by Councilmember Mitch Brown. Chair Brown, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. Uh, tonight we have the ordinance number 11362017 to authorize the Director of Public Safety Division of Police to modify a contract with Columbus Towing and Recovery LLC for the towing of all impounded motor vehicles and watercraft as ordered by the police personnel to authorize the expenditure of $1,710,000 from the general fund and the declared emergency. If there are no questions for my comments, I move, my colleagues, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Also, we have ordinance 11502017 to authorize the finance and management director to associate all general budget registrations resulting from this ordinance with the appropriate universal term contract purchase agreement for the purchase of video storage system and accessories for the Columbus Division of Police Body Worn Camera Program to authorize the expenditure of $1,449,000 from the Department of Public Safety's capital improvement funds and to declare an emergency. Uh, Assistant Director Collins, your comments please. I lost my end there, sorry. Um, thank they lose you. stuff in public safety. <laughs> thank you, President Klein and uh, Councilman Brown and the rest of council members. Yes, um, this has been a great partnership between public safety, the Department of Transportation, and finance. Um, and thanks to Director Orth, who's gonna talk a little bit about the technical part. But um, the important thing for us is that this will um, help public safety store both evidentiary and non-evidentiary videos um, in a secure environment that will allow the capacity to replicate and store additional copies, which will further protect from video loss. Director Orr, you have any additional comments? 
President Klein, uh, President Pro Tem Tyson, uh, uh, Chair Brown, members of council, as Assistant Director Collins just mentioned, this has been a uh, collaborative project of public safety finance and technology to sele select this new video storage array uh, for both the body-worn camera uh, and the dash camera programs. Uh, the new storage environment will allow the city to go to full scale over the next two years uh, on the body-worn camera program of approximately 1,500 cameras. Uh, technology and public safety will be moving uh, existing video files to the nor new storage array. That'll be both the body-worn camera videos and the dash camera videos. Uh, the new array will increase the city's backup and archival options while reducing storage costs for video when compared to our existing environments and other options uh, that the city considered in the RFP process. Uh, the initial build-out of the video storage uh, was based on consumption in the program as we currently know it. Uh, public safety and technology are actively monitoring consumption of the program uh, as it's being implemented and will be increasing storage uh, as uh, the cameras continue to be implemented. The initial environment is capable of storing approximately 530,000 hours of video. Uh, technology will oversee the implementation and operations of the new video storage environment, but we will continue to work closely with public safety uh, on an on, in our ongoing operational review. We have weekly reviews of the environment, and that will continue until the body-worn camera program reaches full scale. This legislation is co-sponsored with uh, President, Pro, uh, President Klein. Would you like to make any comments, sir? Thank you, Chair Brown. A question to one of the directors uh, who is most appropriate to, but how does this ordinance play into the uh, timeline for implementation of body-worn cameras? Is, is this help expedite the rollout? Is this on par with the timeline as proposed? Because uh, certainly eager to uh, get these cameras out on the street and have it all frontline officers being equipped, Director Orth. Uh, President Klein, members of council, um, the city uh, uh, in December uh, expanded the existing environment uh, so that we could uh, pilot the program. Uh, this is consistent with our project timeline and once this new array is installed, which we expect to happen in uh, June of this year, uh, we will then have the baseline environment established and we will be able to go to full scale. So. Uh, our, we are consi consistent with uh, our timeline and the plan is to install approximately uh, 500 ca uh, cameras uh, per public safety's uh, in implementation schedule over the course of the next six or seven quarters. Uh, Director Orr, just one brief comment. Would you please elaborate again so that people understand the difference between the dash cam cameras and the body-worn cameras and the final footage that was misplaced or lost the last time so that we don't have a replication of that incident happening again. Chair Brown, members of council, uh, the public safety operates two different camera systems. One is the dash camera system. Uh, as everyone knows, we lost uh, some video uh, early this year. That's the cameras that are installed in the police vehicles themselves. The body-worn cameras are attached to uh, an officer's clothing, uh, two completely separate systems. Uh, this new system, which will again uh, increase the city's uh, backup and archival op options, uh, will be used for both systems. So it is, it is purpose-built for video and we will be uh, migrating uh, both uh, sources of video, both the dash video and the body-worn camera video to this new environment. If there are no further questions, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. And also this evening, as, uh, ordinance number 12132017 to authorize and direct the Director of Public Safety to dispose and destroy the Division of Police used expired body armor and to enter into a contract with Fiber Brokers Brent Industries to provide said service at no cost and to waive the relevant provisions of Chapter 329 relating to the sale of city-owned personal property and to declare an emergency. Uh, Director Collins, any comments? Thank you, sir. Um, just if you don't know, bulletproof vests do have a shelf life and they do wear out, um, especially when officers are wearing them daily and in a, an environment. And we're just glad that we just don't have to discard them, that there are parts of them that can be reused in other ways. 
And for my colleagues uh, on the uh, chapter 329, 3.34 addresses the issue of if you can first try to sell the property within the city if the, someone else can use it. Nobody else can use body armor, so that's why we're going outside. If there are no further questions, I move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Legislation passes. That's all I have this evening, sir. Thank you, Chair Brown. The next committee is Public Service and Transportation. Uh, Councilmember Shannon Harden is the chair. In his absence, Councilmember Stenziano will be heading this committee. And I also know that you have a piece in Public Utilities, so if you want to do Public Service followed by Public Utilities, the floor is yours, Chair. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight in Public Service, bring forward Ordinance 1151-2017 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management on behalf of the Department of Public Service, Division of Design and Construction to establish a purchase order with Zwick USA for the replacement of PVC testing equipment to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the City Code Chapter 329 to authorize the expenditure of $45,592 from the Private Construction Inspection Fund and to declare an emergency. Uh, the Department of Public Service Division of Design and Construction is in need of replacing the PVC testing equipment as the current equipment is outdated and no longer reliable. An emergency exists in the usual daily operation of the department and that is immediately necessary to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to establish this purchase order uh, as soon as possible, thereby preserving the public health, peace, prosperity, property, and safety, and welfare. Prosperity, I threw in there, so I apologize. <laughs> if there are any questions, no co questions or comments, I'll move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Uh, next is Ordinance 1193-2017 to authorize the City Auditor to appropriate $3,321,328 in the fund 7768 Smart City Private Grant Fund within the Department of Public Service for various expenses related to the implementation of the Smart Columbus Electrification Plan and declare an emergency. As we all know, the City of Columbus, acting through the Department of Public Service, pursued and won uh, the Smart City competition, which included a $10 million grant from the Paul G. Allen Family Foundation Vulcan, Inc., in connection with the Smart City Challenge, sponsored by the U.S. Department of Transportation. Uh, previously, ordinance 1863-2016 authorized the Director of Public Service to enter into agreements with and to accept grant monies and other resources from Vulcan, which are to be distributed to the city over the course of four years. This is the second installment of that grant funding, which will support the implementation of the Smart Columbus Electrification Plan. The City of Columbus, along with an extensive network of public and private partners, has aligned around a unified vision to lead the country in the deployment of smart city technologies, as well as reduce the region's carbon and greenhouse gas emissions through electrification of the electric supply and transportation sectors. Smart Columbus offers a bold and practical electrification plan designed to produce one of the largest regional GHG reductions, address the Midwest lagging possession, position, and electric vehicle deployment rapidly accelerating the region to a leading position, advance a replicable model of transportation electrification for mid-sized cities across the nation, and produce data-rich tractable metrics to demonstrate project successes and share best practices via our mid-sized city forum. A separate legislation will be submitted in the future for Council's approval to expend additional appropriated funds. I do want to recognize, uh, and I know he's sitting in the back, our Chief Innovation Officer Mike Stevens and the rest of the Smart City team for all their hard work and what they'll be doing as this uh, additional grant funding is allocated. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. In the final piece of legislation in the Public Service and Transportation Committee is Ordinance 1199-2017 to amend the 2017 Capital Improvement Budget to authorize and direct the City Auditor to transfer cash and appropriation within the Streets and Highways Bond Fund to authorize the Director of Public Service to enter into contract with Double Z Construction Company in connection with the Pedestrian Safety Improvements Mound Street Sidewalks Benz Boulevard to Wayne Avenue Project to authorize the expenditure of $4,164,000 $37.14 from the Streets and Highways Bonds Fund and declare an emergency. Uh, the work on this project consists of adjusting curb lines on Mound Street to accommodate sidewalks, minor utility re relocations, traffic signal work, lighting and drainage improvements. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. And we will move over to Public Utilities where I bring forward ordinance 
0584-2017 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to enter into a contract with SGI Matrix LLC for security system parts, installation, maintenance, monitoring, repair, and support services for the various facilities of the Department of Public Utilities, to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the City Code, to modify all contracts and agreements with Matrix Systems, Inc. and Zentry Systems Integration LLC by assigning all past, present, and future contracts and agreements to SGI Matrix LLC under their new name and federal identification number, to authorize an ex the expenditure of $28,440.68 from the Sewer System Operating Fund and $24,183.32 from the Water Operating Fund and to declare an emergency. This agreement provides for the repair, replacement, and servicing of all accessible components and devices, emergency service calls, and 24 hours a day, seven days a week, telephone support panel and peripheral component replacement for the various electrical systems. Due to the proprietary nature of the security software and the compatibility of existing security equipment, it was in the be city's best interest to waive the provisions of competitive bidding and enter into this contract. This ordinance is being submitted as an emergency to allow for the establishment of a new contract to provide for the necessary security needs at the various facilities of the Department of Public Utilities and provide the necessary establishment of funding under the new company name. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. That's all I have in the committees. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Stenziano. The next committee is Recreation and Parks. It's chaired by Councilmember Page. Chair Page, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. This evening in Recreation and Parks, we have Ordinance 1015-2017 to authorize the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into an agreement with Class Acts Columbus Incorporated to provide professional and fiscal services for 2017 programs to authorize the expenditure of $71,000 from Recreation and Parks Special Purpose Fund and $74,000 from Recreation and Parks Operating Fund for a total of $145,000 to weigh the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Codes. Uh, this ordinance is to support our Jazz and Rip Press as well as Rhythm on the River. Um, if there are no further questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. President Klein, may I move to the Housing Committee? Thank you. We have Ordinance 1207-2017 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to make financial assistance available as grants to home buyers, renters, for-profit, and non-profit organizations to increase the local supply of decent, safe, and sanitary housing and decrease the number of vacant properties in our neighborhoods. To authorize the expenditure of $3 million from a 2016 Housing Preservation Fund and to declare an emergency. A Director Shoney, could you speak briefly as to how home buyers, renters, for profit, and non profit organizations can find out more about this grant? Uh, thank you, Chair Page, uh, President Pro Tem Tyson, uh, President Klein, members of Council. The easiest way is to go to our website. Um, which is easily found by going to Columbus.gov. There's a within the Department of Development page. There's a whole section on housing. These funds really do touch almost every piece of our housing program. Uh, we have services for folks who are low income and need help staying in their home. We have services for developers who are looking to build affordable housing, and um, we also, as we talked about a couple weeks ago, have money to help and programs with our partners to help with home buyers, uh, whether it be through financing or most importantly, sometimes home buyer education. Thank you, Director. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. And President Klein, I do have one piece in rules and reference. Thank you. Ordinance 0265-2017 to amend section 919 I mean point 13 of the Columbus City Code to grant the Director of Recreation and Parks the authority to set policy and guidelines for sale, service, and or consumption of alcoholic beverages at select parts and facilities used as event venues and to declare an emergency. The Director, if you have any further comments. Thank you, Councilmember Page, President Klein, members of Council. This is just a correction of a piece of code that's already been in place. We're just modifying it to address facilities and names as they are today. Um, if, you're, if you look at the, the red line version, it talks about the riverfront park and it's changing it to Scioto Mile and then addressing some of other facilities that have been uh, recognized and used in our um, downtown district and the same terminology that we use with other departments in dealing with the downtown district. 
Uh, we worked with the city attorney's office on this and it's been a, a very easy process and appreciate your consideration. Thank you, director. Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. It's been moved and seconded. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Legislation passed. Thank you. That's all I have this evening, Mr. President. Thank you, Chair Page. Any other business to come before council? Seeing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. We stand adjourned. We do have two non-agenda speakers in zoning at 6.30. Just a reminder uh, that there will be no council meeting next Monday in observance of Memorial Day. Where are we here? Ah, regular meeting number 28 will now come to order. Can I get a motion to dismiss with a reading of the journal? Thanks. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. We'll now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Jiza Page chairs that committee. All members serve on the committee. Chair Page, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. Before beginning our zoning agenda, I'll explain the rules of council as pertaining to speaking before council on zonings and variances. We permit three speakers on each side, three proponents and three opponents, and we ask that they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side, and we provide an opportunity for rebuttal from the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, we ask that anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against any council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. Thank you. 0267-2017, two rezone 5440 Morse Road, 43230, being approximately 15.6 acres located at the northeast corner of Morse Road and Preserve Crossing Boulevard from PUD 8 Plan Unit Development D District to PUD 8 Plan Unit Development District. The applicant is Lifestyle Communities Limited. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The City Department's recommendation is approval. Northland Community Council's recommendation is disapproval. I now like to ask for a staff presentation. President Klein, Chair Page, members of the Council. The site is comprised of a vacant single unit dwelling in undeveloped, undeveloped land zoned in the PUD 8 Planned Unit Development District. The requested PUD 8 Planned Unit Unit Development District will allow a 124 unit residential development on one lot. The existing PUD text also permits 124 units, but on individual lots. The requested PUD has an increase in the amount of open space provided from 4.8 acres to 7.3 acres. The development text carries over commitments for building setbacks, access and street details, street trees, sidewalks, maximum building height, garage requirements, landscape and buffering, building material commitments, and pay we grow and parkland dedication ordinance obligations. The site is located within the boundaries of the preserve district of the Northland Plan Volume 2, which recommends that the current residential pattern of, de of development east of Hamilton Road, south of Old Dublin Granville Road, to be continued with single unit residential development encouraged, and that existing land use and zoning patterns be taken into consideration when decisions are made regarding zoning changes. The request remains compatible with the density and development standards of adjacent residential developments and it incorporates natural resources with increased open space. Therefore, city's de city department's recommendation is for approval. Thank you and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Council Member Cinziano. Thank you, Chair. Just quickly, this project has a little bit of history. Um, the density between what was proposed before and what's now before us has not changed, correct? That is correct. Thank you. Is the applicant present and like to make any additional comments? Thank you, Attorney Shannon. Good evening, Mr. President, Chairperson Page, Mike Shannon on behalf of the applicant. Staff did a great job doing the presentation. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for the applicant? Just Council Member question. Mitchell Brown. Shannon, again, how often do we run into circumstances here? We have not the usage, but the zoning. Is that not correct? Yeah, uh, basically, uh, Northland, I believe, was concerned that uh, the revised uh, development was renter as opposed to uh, condominium, 
And the fundamental distinction in the zoning is that you regulate the use and not the user. Um, and that's why this uh, received staff uh, approval and uh, hopefully we'll receive this council's approval. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no further questions or comments, I would like to move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you very much. We have variance 1222-2017 to rezone 5771 Maple Canyon Avenue, 43229, being approximately 3.84 acres located on the west side of Maple Canyon Avenue, approximately 315 feet north of East Dublin Granville Road from LAR 12 Limited Apartment Residential District to ARLD Apartment Residential District. The applicant is National Church Residences. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The City Department's recommendation is approval. Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval. If there are no questions or comments for staff, I would like to move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. We have a companion piece for this parcel, 1223-2017, to grant a variance from the provisions of section 3312-49C, minimum numbers of required parking spaces of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 5771 Maple Canyon Avenue, 43229, to permit a supportive housing apartment building with reduced parking in the ARLD apartment residential district. The applicant is National Church Residences. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The City Department's recommendation is approval. Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval. And staff, if you could just speak briefly to why um, the variance for parking is being recommended. Absolutely. Uh, the intended use on this property is a supportive housing apartment building. Most of these residents, uh, they do not have vehicles, and that is why uh, the reduction in parking is supported. It is conditioned only on that type of apartment housing in this case. I'd be happy to answer any other questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions for staff? Seeing none, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. In our final variance this evening, 1271-2017, to grant a variance from the provisions of section 3363-01-M, Manufacturing District of the Columbus City Codes, for the property located at 1181 South Front Street, 43206, to permit two dwelling units in conjunction with a private artist studio in the M Manufacturing District. The applicant is Malcolm Cochran. The proposed use is a two dwelling unit in a private artist studio. The city department's recommendation is approval. Columbus Southside Area Commission's recommendation is approval. Are there any additional comments from staff? Is the applicant present and like to make an, any additional comments? You can, uh, Mr. Cochran, if you can come up to the podium. Thank you for coming down this evening. I simply want to say that I have been before this group two other times. I don't want you to think that I'm collecting properties that I'm going to then have my private residence in and I'm colonizing the place with studios. In the previous two, I had not bought the properties. I, they were all but approved, but then the, the deal fell through. This time I own the property before I come to you. I'm very excited about this. Um, this is going to happen and I would also like to thank Building and Zoning staff, Shannon Pine and Michael Merritt, they have been terrific to work with each of the three times that I have worked with them. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Cochran. Any Cochran. questions for me? Thank you. If there are no further questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you, Mr. President. That's all we have this evening. Thank you, Chair. Any other business to come before Council or the Zoning Committee this evening? Seeing none, can I get a motion to adjourn zoning regular meeting number 28? Just moved and seconded. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. We stand adjourned.